Hey, thanks for joining me. It's a uh, early Saturday morning, a little bit overcast, but should be pretty good weather today. I've got a brisket on the new pellet grill, I'm trying to learn how all that stuff works, but that is not the topic of today's video. So uh, today we're gonna be taking a look at this thing. That is a robotic lawnmower. Now this particular one is by a company called Mamotion, and this is the Luba 2 all-wheel drive, and they make several versions of this. This particular variation of this model happens to be the 5000H, which is the one that gives you the higher cut deck height um, because I've got a, a lot of land here. And this and the 5000 uh, basically means that it should cover up to 5,000 square meters of uh, yard, which equates to about one and a half acres. Now I've got a lot more than one and a half acres here out at the uh, country property and I I'm not gonna be able to mow the whole thing, but I think that I've done the Google map uh, perimeter measuring and on the front yard, and I think my front yard actually falls right at just about one and a half acres. And if this works, this would be a tremendous time saver. This will save me at least an hour and a half every week during mowing season, sometimes twice a week. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how well this thing actually works in real life. Now, I will say that three or four years ago, I started seeing ads for these robot vacuum cleaners. And by three or four, I probably mean seven or eight years ago. And for a long time, I was, I kind of scoffed at those robot vacuum cleaners. I'm just like, really, you, you don't have time to run your vacuum really quick. But what I have found is that about two years ago, I went ahead and bought a, uh, a shark robot vac from Costco, but it has been an absolute time saver. Yes, it gets stuck occasionally, usually because somebody left something out that I forgot to check on, but this thing has saved me hours. And more importantly, it keeps my house cleaner. Now it doesn't fully replace a hand vac where you need, can get into the little corners and stuff where this robot vac uh, can't quite get into. So it, it's not a 100% replacement for your vacuum cleaner, but it has saved me so much time. And in terms of dog hair, it's almost a non-issue at this point in the house. I no longer find dog hair tumbleweeds wafting across the floor all the time, which used to be the case until I would get my lazy butt up and go run the vacuum. So robot vacuum cleaner um, test, I would call it, or experiment, a definite pass. I think that was a huge improvement. Now, the reason I tell you this is because I've now started seeing all these ads for these robot lawnmowers. And so initially my thought was, really, who, who needs a robot lawnmower? And then I started thinking, wait a minute, this actually sounds like a direct parallel, you know, it's like deja vu all over again for what I was going through the thought process with the robot vacuum cleaner. But in reality, there's a lot more complications here outside. We got the weather, uh, we've got uh, landscaping. Actually, it's not that much more complicated aside from the weather perhaps. But anyway, let's find out if this robot lawnmower is actually a time saver or it's more hassle than it's worth. At this point, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. So the key thing is I need to get it set up and it uses a technology called RTK, which is real-time kinematics. Uh, it's basically the same kind of tech that um, this real big fancy commercial John Deere uh, farm equipment uses to plow those really straight lines and, and do all that stuff automatically. So it's essentially, it's, it's allowing this unit to use uh, GPS, which is gonna give you one or two meter resolution accuracy in combination with a, a, a separate triangulation unit, which is the RTK unit. And it allows you, it allows this unit to basically go from uh, one or two meters of accuracy to about two inches or maybe four or five centimeters of accuracy in terms of the lines that it follows. So that's, should be pretty good if I get it set up correctly. So let me, uh, let me get this thing out of the box figure out what assembly's like, and then I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put this, and we can start running it through its paces and find out if it's actually worth considering. So, stay tuned. All right, so this is what, what it looks like when you open the box. I actually had already previously taken out the manual here, which is actually just a quick start guide, and just has some basic assembly instructions. Doesn't really give you a lot of uh, deep dive into the features and configuration options and all that sort of stuff. For that, you actually need to go to memotion.com and go to their little support tab and get their user manual. It's an 83 page or 84 page PDF. 
um, that you'll probably want to keep handy, at least electronically. I don't know if I'm going to print it out or not, but I have perused that, uh, that large PDF user guide because that's what's got all the information. And uh, it's good that they put it online because they're continually updating it. And uh, so there are some new uh, updates, even as of uh, two months ago, some pretty significant feature updates. All right, with that top styrofoam block pulled off, you can see the main uh, Luba 2 here. And you can see, well, I don't know if you can get the sense for this or not, but it is a, just about the size of the deck of a standard push mower. But that's kind of what you got here. It's slightly narrower uh, in cutting uh, than, a, than the deck of a standard push mower. And it's sitting on top of, um, of its charge base right here. So let me go ahead and get this stuff out of the box. All right, so there's the unit right there. And you can see in the front, it's got these, since it doesn't have direct steering, uh, or at least pivotable front wheels, it's got these omnidirectional wheels. So it kind of uses a, uh, you know, a tank method or a zero turning type method where it spins one of the back wheels and it's, it enables the unit to pivot and then turn sideways on these front wheels without tearing up the lawn. Now, it does weigh, I would say, probably, I have to put the exact number up here, but I'm going to guess about 35 pounds. So it's got a little bit of heft to it. Uh, that is the charging unit right on the top of the box there. And then, of course, we've got all of our accessories over here. So you can see it's got a... Uh, a front suspension now being all-wheel drive this should be one of the better units you can get your hands on that will be able to navigate uh, inclines um, and other kinds of rough terrain so I am uh, hoping since my yard is uh, got some at least modest inclines but uh, it is pretty rough we'll find out if this thing gets stuck on a regular basis or not that's something I'm very curious about all right let's uh, let's proceed and see if we can get this thing put together all right, so the first step, according to the manual, is to attach the uh, 3D vision guide. That kind of goes right there. I'm going to pull this little top plate off. Get that all connected. Tuck those down in there and put the screws back on. All right, looks like the next step is to attach the little bumper assembly. All right, that was easy enough. I think that's really all the assembly that's required in terms of the mower itself. So according to the manual, you definitely don't want to put the RTK unit under a tree or right up next to the house. Um, there is a, uh, an installation arm, like a wall mount arm that you can get for this that allows you to kind of hang it off the, a really high point, maybe under an eave on one of the one of the gables of your house so that it has an unobstructed view of the sky. I think I'm going to put it kind of right in the middle of these little, uh, whatever those are, boxwoods. And uh, it'll, it'll, of course, stick up several feet. And hopefully that'll be open enough in the sky. And then uh, I'll just run the power cable. I'll run a little slot down there and just temporarily uh, slot that in below the grass line so the cable doesn't get cut. And then uh, that would maybe allow me to put the base unit down here. I've got a lot of cleanup to do to prep this space so that I can put the, the charging base unit right here. All right, here's the temporary home, quasi-permanent home. Just uh, before I do too much work on this space, I wanna make sure that it's, it's gonna work for me here. All right, I'm letting this thing charge up. Once it's fully charged, I'm gonna take it around and map out a route. All right, now that I got this thing pretty much fully charged, uh, I did have to add the RTK unit separately in the uh, Mamotion app. So you have to first add the Luba 2 mower, and then you add the RTK unit uh, to the app as separate devices, and they both will have to maintain their own Wi-Fi connections. So just be aware that you have to do that. And then you'll want to make sure you go into the app, uh, tap on the actual picture of the mower and then later the picture of the RTK device and uh, follow the prompts to upgrade the firmware. Now I had to actually do a two-step firmware upgrade on the Luba 2 and just a single upgrade on the RTK but it is important that you check for firmware upgrades and you, again you do that just by simply tapping on the actual picture of each of the devices within the app and it'll tell you if there are any uh, upgrades available for you. So make sure you apply those before you start to do any work because you may end up having to redo your work if you don't do that. So let's go find out if all that actually works. All 
right, the moment of truth. I uh, did finish the entire creating of the map and the no-go zones and the channels between here and the mapped area and also my other mapped area. And then I let it sit while I went and ran some errands and it fully recharged 100% pretty quickly because it was only down to about maybe 94% when I finished the mapping. So let me uh, go into the app here. Let's just see, like I go to enter map and I will tap on uh, the main area here. And then I got to pick the cutting height. Let's go ahead and set this pretty high. I'm going to set this to 3.9 inches because my grass is actually quite high right now. I think I'll just use standard zigzag mode. Let me see what advanced settings here. Path spacing, 9.8 inches. So no-go zone mowing laps. I think that's where it draws a lap around the no-go zone. I think I'll choose one. A lot of different options here. Let's just go ahead and press start and see what happens. Let's see how long this takes. Really going to be pushing this thing to that almost the full one and a quarter acres. And away we go. Well, it's still mowing, and I have to say this is my favorite way to mow the lawn. Looks like we're about 10% done. Two hours later. Oh, just sitting here doing some editing and mowing the yard. Gotta say, I'm <laughs> really enjoying this. All right, it is about 10 after 9 p.m., and the sun has already set. This thing is still going. But listen how quiet this thing is. Super quiet. You're definitely not going to disturb any neighbors, even in a smaller suburban setting. Now, recharge times are actually fairly quick. They, they take about an hour. And that takes you from 15% back up to 80%, which gets you uh, as much recharge in as short a time as possible because from 80 to 100 percent it probably takes another hour uh, even if you were to run it all the way to 100 percent you'd spend all day sitting there charging so I think that's you know it's kind of like an EV in that sense I think that's kind of how that works but yeah I can continue mowing I'm, I'm just gonna let it go and see what it does as the Sun goes down all right it is now 1037 completely dark outside except up close to the house the mower is out there somewhere working. In fact, the little guy you see right there is a possum who's, I guess I'm making him nervous. But anyway, yeah, the mower is still working. We'll see how long that's going to last. All right, it is about 7 a.m. This thing has been going now for upwards of, uh, call it 17 hours, I think. And it did run all through the night. And as you can see, it has, uh, in this wet grass, it's accumulated quite a bit of a mess but that combined with the uh, nighttime mowing it goes way slower at night because the 3d vision module on top uh, it's not able to have enough light to safely determine uh, what the obstacles are so it has to do the um, obstacle avoidance with the physical bumper so it slows itself down significantly when it's doing uh, cycles at nighttime is it perfect? No, but I mean, look at these lines. It's actually doing a very good job. All right, just for a quick test for obstacle avoidance, I have set this to no touch, but you can set up to soft touch or light touch. Uh, there's a couple of different settings. I'm gonna find out what it does if I stand in front of it. Let's see if it goes around me. So the 3D vision detects that I'm there. As you can see, <laughs> I think I can hear it grumbling that I'm screwing up at straight lines. But let me stand in front of it again, because I like torturing this little thing. 
at least until they become our robot overlords standing slightly off to the side now it actually it's interesting kind of briefly shut off there so it reacted a little bit differently when I was off to the side but it turned the blades back on taking a little bit more of a wide berth and it's uh, resuming the pattern so pretty cool you might think is there any safety mechanism that might happen if I were to try to lift this up while it's running so let's see what that does And it stops the blades. Stop working. <laughs> so it talks to you and it stops the blades immediately. Continue working. And it does auto recover when you set it back down. And of course at any time you can obviously just hit the big red stop button. Stop working. And we'll go ahead and shut it down. Power off. Now I can, if I need to, safely flip it over being careful not to damage the camera on the top but uh, one thing I noticed is that the these blades will get grass uh, kind of accumulating in them and they should rotate pretty freely and you do need to be careful because these are still sharp but if you carefully rotate the blade uh, the grass does kind of come out so every one or two mows might be a good idea to come around and just sort of uh, clear out the grass that might accumulate beneath the blade just uh, might recommend gloves but yeah just run through and remove anything that might be accumulating underneath the blade and then when you want to send it home you can either steer it back manually or just turn it on and then in the mobile app you just click on the little recharge icon I'm actually back it up here go back in there click the little recharge icon right there and you get a prompt that says return to charge, confirm. Start recharging. And uh, kind of knows where it is in space because of the RTK unit and GPS. And it is just going to flip itself around. So I don't have to actually manually steer it. It's going to actually turn here and use the channel that I've defined to go across my driveway, which is right on this corner. And then it is going to basically make a line that goes right over there. To the grass and off it goes so it'll go ahead and set itself up to recharge and i don't have to worry about it okay so i've actually been running the luba 2 now pretty much unattended at consistent four day intervals for the past several weeks and well take a look at the results it's really impressively straight and clean lines with really very acceptable cut quality after that initial high cut at four inches uh, due to my grass being extra shaggy it did definitely improve on subsequent cuts and by the way, I'm definitely going to want to do a couple of follow-up videos on this mower, maybe after using it for a full mowing season, and then perhaps uh, another follow-up after two or three full seasons. But for now, let me just share my thoughts on this Luba 2 robot lawnmower after having used it for nearly a full month. First off, let me say that I was fairly skeptical that this relatively small mower could really do a, a respectable job on my lawn since I'm really pushing the limits of this particular Luba 2 5000H version which is rated for 1.25 acres or about 5,000 square meters. And the area of the two zones that I've defined for it to maintain uh, actually do add up to almost exactly that 1.25 acre limit. So especially after that first full run it had, I would say that I was only maybe just marginally satisfied with the quality of the cut. But I have to admit that after the second run a couple of days later, where I also dropped the cutting height from four inches down to three inches, it's really done an impressive job. And I must admit that I'm now pretty much completely satisfied with the quality of the cut. In fact, the super tight and nearly perfect straight lines this thing creates are so impressive that even one of my neighbors had some envious comments to share about it. And back at the beginning of the video, I think I commented on the expected parallels I had between the, the robot lawnmower and a robot vacuum cleaner. And I think those parallels have turned out to be pretty accurate. My robot vac takes care of about 90% of the vacuuming, but I still have to occasionally go out with a hand vac and touch up the corners maybe the stairs from time to time, but on balance, it really has saved me a ton of time. And likewise, the Luba 2 robot mower takes care of the mowing quite competently, but you still do need to go around with the string trimmer every couple of weeks, you know, or so, 
to clean up around the no-go zones and the fence lines, depending on your level of OCD. But I mean, really, isn't that something you'd pretty much have to do even with a, you know, full-size riding lawnmower? But unlike my Shark Robot vacuum cleaner, the Luba 2 has not, at least so far, gotten stuck and had to be rescued even a single time. And my robot vacuum seems to get stuck somewhere in the house about once every three or four runs. And I have to admit, I really didn't expect the Luba 2 to operate quite so reliably on its own without, you know, without me having to go babysit it from time to time. And that is a very welcome surprise because the whole point of an automated product like this is to go out and do the job for you so you can spend that time doing something else, maybe more valuable with your time or maybe more enjoyable. And obviously, uh, if you have to go constantly babysit the thing, well, that kind of defeats the whole purpose. Now, I would also say that I think Mammotion's software team is doing an excellent job ensuring that there's a you know, wide variety of options to enable you to get the kind of results that you want without, for the most part, making the interface overly complicated. Now, I wouldn't quite go so far to say that they've hit it completely out of the park, at least with this current version. And by the way, they've actually had two firmware updates and one mobile app upgrade in the past month that I've been using it. So clearly they are very actively working to maximize the functionality and create a, uh, you know, a positive user experience. But that said, there is one aspect of the mobile app that I think could probably be improved a little bit, and that pertains to configuring tasks. Creating and scheduling tasks is actually pretty reasonably straightforward in and of itself. But one thing that's really important, at least to me, is the ability to have the mower kind of alternate between at least four different cutting patterns or directions. And the task options do give you the ability to define the cutting path angle that the mower is going to use when it's executing a particular task, but you can only assign one cutting path angle to one task. So since I want the mower to kind of alternate between four different cutting path angles, I have to define a separate task uh, for each cutting path. And then I have to do some scheduling math to figure out the scheduling intervals necessary for all four tasks uh, in order to get the mower to do, say, mow every five days and then alternate through those cutting paths on each run. It's not really a big deal, but it seems to me they could probably make that fairly common use case much more user-friendly to set up if they maybe allowed you to just create one single task that could be alternated between the defined set of cutting paths and then just assign that one task a scheduled interval and boom, you're done. Maybe they'll find a way to implement that at a future date. But as I said, you can really accomplish the same thing in the current version. It just takes a few more steps to do it. So definitely not a deal breaker. And then of course, there are a ton of other useful options that are available in the app that really do allow you to configure the mower, you know, to do pretty much exactly what you want it to do. Okay, a couple of other observations that I think are worth sharing. So this mower is slow, and that's, uh, that's certainly not unique to the Luba 2. Certainly something that you could easily say uh, that applies to pretty much all of these robot mowers. And that by itself is really a complete non-issue because as I stated before, you don't have to babysit this thing at all. But uh, because it is so slow on larger lawns like mine, it can take anywhere from 15 to maybe 18 hours to complete the full one and a quarter acres in my front yard. Okay, quick update. I know I said it takes upwards of 17 to 18 or even 19, 20 hours to do this acre and a quarter. But I did make some adjustments just uh, in the last day or so where I actually reduced the amount of overlap on each lane mow and I also increased the feet per second up to I think a two and a half feet per second. So those two changes have enabled me to do the whole acre and a quarter in under 12 hours which means I don't necessarily have to mow at night and I can keep that mowing window sort of when the grass is dry and that will uh, help uh, at least cut down the amount of maintenance that I have to do in terms of clearing that clumped up wet grass out from underneath that undercarriage. So just be aware you can actually do that and it doesn't take as long as I may have originally given you the impression. And by the way it is able to mow at night just fine and your neighbors will never know it's running because this thing is just super quiet. But having it mow in wet grass will definitely mean that you're going to have to thoroughly hose it off once a week, take some care to spray out that undercarriage and remove any wet grass clippings that will inevitably accumulate, especially around the cutting blades. And you'll have to do that after each one or two sessions, depending on you know, how, how often you're mowing. Also, you'll need to flip the cutting blades around every few weeks and then replace them every couple of months or so. It's a super simple process. It only takes about 10 minutes to do it. And they do provide a replacement set of blades in the box for you. But when the time comes and you do have to buy new blades, they're actually not crazy expensive. And they, I think it costs about $16 a set. But that is an ongoing maintenance item that you do want to factor in. And if you happen to have a bunch of trees in your lot that uh, drop a significant amount of large leaves in the fall, uh, that's also going to be something that you'll want to factor in since you'll most likely have to keep those, uh, those fairly well raked to avoid overstressing this mower since it's just not going to have the power of a full-size mulching mower. And 
as far as I'm aware, there's no mulching accessories to enable that kind of capability on this mower anyway. And if you happen to live in an area where you have legitimate concerns that somebody might just toss this in the back of a truck and drive away, you definitely want to consider hiding maybe something like an Apple AirTag up in that front bumper, since it apparently doesn't have any built-in location broadcasting, at least not without using the optional SIM card. But even that kind of seems like it would be pretty easy for a thief to find and remove. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay, let's quickly review the different versions of this mower and how much they cost. So as I said, the version that I've been using is the 5000H, with the 5000 referring to a coverage area of up to 5,000 square meters, or about one and a quarter acres. And the H designation indicates that it uh, has a higher cutting range, which allows you to set the height from 2.2 inches up to four. The non-H versions have a cutting range of one inch up to 2.7 inches, which kind of seems a little bit of a narrow, kind of a low range for my personal preference. Now that said, for small lawns up to about a quarter of an acre, they have a 1000 variant that is priced at $20.99. They have a 3000 variant for up to three quarters of an acre for $24.99. And then the 5000H that I have that covers, as I said, an acre and a quarter for $28.99. And then finally, they do have a 10,000 version covering up to two and a half acres. And that one will run you a full $4,099. And yeah, obviously that's getting well into riding lawnmower pricing, but uh, think about it like this. How much is your time worth and how much would it cost you to pay someone else to mow your lot? Now, in my case, I kind of wish that I had gone for the two and a half acre version, but even with the 5000H one and a quarter acre version that I have, this is gonna save me about 35 mowing sessions for a complete season where I live, which equates to a time savings of about 52 hours that I can use to be doing other more productive or more enjoyable things like hiking and biking, kayaking, or <laughs> editing videos, whatever. And I can tell you that at least in my area, it did easily cost me at least $100 per session to pay somebody to come out and mow just my front lawn. And at 35 sessions a season, that's $3,500 at a minimum which is already $600 more than that 5,000H unit that I'm using actually costs. So the economics actually work out pretty well here, especially if you have other things that you'd rather be doing with your time. So yeah, I'd say that if you've got maybe up to about two and a half acres or maybe less to mow, and you don't live in an area where you're really all that concerned about theft, I think the robot lawnmower's time has actually finally arrived. And this Luba 2 from Man Motion has actually convinced me that it's a, it's a legitimately solid option to consider. And of course, if you're interested in checking it out, I'll leave links in the video description below for you. And hey, if you did find anything useful in the video at all, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider clicking that like button for me. It does help out quite a bit. And uh, I do thank you for spending the time with me on this video, and I do hope you'll consider joining me for the next one. Until then, have fun out there.